And so together, these ordinances tell the story of Christ's atoning work. So that we get the supper, um, that we celebrate and remember the death of Christ, we acknowledge that. And baptism, we celebrate his burial and his resurrection. Baptism is the first response for a, a new believer um, to, to walk out that step of obedience. The word baptize itself is borrowed from uh, the Greek term baptizo, meaning to immerse or to be totally enveloped in water. Some faiths practice infant baptism by sprinkling over the baby's head, um, which they feel um, secures their identification with a certain faith or a certain uh, church. But we practice baptism by immersion because the word baptism means to immerse, not to pour or to sprinkle. But second, the um, spirit, scriptural baptism is the result of a person's own decision to be able to follow through the waters of baptism. It's it's them that wants to make that commitment. They are wanting to testify to what God has done, um, and it's not the decision of somebody else. And so that's why we do baptism by immersion. In the New Testament, whenever people professed Christ and were baptized, they were assimilated into the local assembly of believers. That's just what they did, be saved, get baptized, and then, you know, Come and join this, this body of believers. The possible exception to that would be um, the Ethiopian eunuch that Philip baptized on the side of the road. We don't know what happened after him. But it seems safe to say that to identify with Christ as the head of the church is also to identify with the church, which is the body of Christ. Does that make sense? We're identifying with all of who Christ is. There are those who view baptism as an act which removes their, their sin and secures their salvation for the one that's being baptized. But we acknowledge baptism to be symbolic of salvation. It's a public profession of faith and a witness to the work of salvation. It's, it's a demonstration of what's already been done within somebody's life. The Bible clearly teaches that salvation is appropriated solely by faith in the grace of Christ and on, on the basis of God's forgiveness for our sins. Baptism itself is, is not salvation, but the symbolic representation of salvation's work. It's an outward demonstration of what has taken place already on the inside. Salvation, according to scripture, is a gift from God due to his grace and our repentance. That's what salvation is. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not of your own doing. It's a gift of God and not a result of works so that no one can boast. In our baptism class for the candidates, an example of a wedding ring was given. A wedding ring doesn't make you married but it's a symbol which identifies your marital status. Baptism doesn't save you, but it does symbolically re represent your status with God. So what's the meaning of baptism? We want to look at what the meaning is. Why do we do it? Um, who can be baptized and when? So what's the meaning of baptism? Well, water baptism can be defined as a visual and de uh, symbolic demonstration of a person's union with Christ in the likeness of his death and resurrection. It signifies that a person's former way of life has been put to death and depicts a release from the mastery of sin. You are declaring that sin does not have mastery over you anymore. Does it say that you are now perfect? Uh-uh. But it does say that even the things that you might still be struggling with, you are determined that you're going to work with God to walk that out and live a life that uh, he, has, he has for you. So the meaning of baptism in its simplest form is a public identification with Jesus Christ and his death for the sins of the world, his subsequent burial and his triumphant resurrection. This is... The one tangible, concrete way that we can display to others what has been accomplished on the inside of us. Why do we baptize? Well, 
mainly we baptize to obey the commands of Christ as part of raising disciples. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. It's a follow-up of being obedient to what Christ asked us to do. You be saved, you get baptized, and then you go and disciple others to do the same. We ask the candidates to give a testimony of their faith in Christ because scripture tells us in Romans 10, 9 and, and 10, that if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with the heart that you believe and are justified and it's with the mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. And so we ask believers to demonstrate and speak it out. There's a, a demonstration of the believer's death to sin, the burial of the old man, and the resurrection to walk in the newness of life with Christ, Romans 6, 3 and 4. Don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. We declare by our baptism that we no longer desire to live without Christ in our life. We no longer want to indulge in sinful behavior, but rather we desire to live according to God's standard of righteousness. We're choosing to put to death all of our sinful ways, does this mean we never struggle again? No, but we are deciding that we are going to do whatever it takes to walk out that decision for Jesus. Who can be baptized then? Well, according to scripture, the only appropriate candidate then is someone who can bear witness for what they, what it truly means. Only one who has experienced regeneration can give genuine witness to that experience. Only one who is sufficiently mature to have recognized and confessed and repented of his sin and made a conscious commitment of faith in Christ can be baptized or should be baptized. You are going through and, and demonstrating what you have come to know. Acts 2, 38 to 41, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, the promises for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourself from this corrupt generation. And those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That'd be a nice crowd but they had to hear the message, they had to accept what it said, and then they had to follow through with what they were supposed to do. Those who understood and accepted Peter's message and wanted to make that decision for themselves, they were eligible for baptism. It was open for anyone so long as they accepted the message. So when can we be baptized? Well, baptism is a public confession of faith an ordinance of a new believer's desire to be obedient to Christ. And therefore, as soon as one is saved, he is eligible to be baptized, so long as they understand what they're doing and the significance of what they're doing. But we also allow baptism to be done when the person's ready to make that choice for themselves. It shouldn't be done out of obligation or compulsion to be baptized for somebody else. It should be motivated by the desire just to glorify God in following through with your obedience. It should be motivated by the desire to, to be faithful and your desire to want to grow in your walk with him and know what it means to live out that freedom. Sometimes we see people wanting to be rebaptized later in life for that very reason. They want to do it out of heartfelt desire for Jesus. So who is the right candidate? What's the right time? The right candidate, the right time is when one can truly share in the reality of what the symbol means. 
what it represents. Like the wedding ring, when one can say they are truly married, it makes sense to wear a wedding band, which, which identifies them as having made their choice to come into that marriage relationship forever with one particular person. And similarly, when baptism represents what's truly happened in one's life, it becomes meaningful, and they can share in the reality of what that symbolic representation means. So today we have three candidates who have made the decision to follow through with the waters of baptism. And I told them that this is their miracle moment. This is their moment where they, they publicly declare that the old me is done with and I'm ready to walk out the newness of me, the new me in Christ. And so I'm going to ask the candidates and those who need to change to go and get ready. Um, let's just have a moment of welcome and uh, just give us a couple of minutes, elbow one another, wake each other up. <laughs> 